You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. We are here to bring you this week's news, and joining me today is Mr. Haya Costello from Drone DJ. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you doing? Very good, very good. Thank you, Paul, and uh, thanks for having me on the show this week. Oh, absolutely. I uh, didn't realize that we missed last week's news episode because of the conference, and you know what? It's okay, but we are back here today to talk about some really interesting issues as DJI faces significant loss and drones are being blamed as scapegoats once again. We're seeing some significant firmware upgrades to some birds and it looks like DJI is trying to show a little bit of love to the enterprise community. So what do we have for our first piece of big news for this week? Well, this was uh, the, the $150 million loss uh, that is as a result of fraud committed by employees and former employees as well as employees from suppliers from DJI. And we first learned about this news uh, last Friday. Uh, actually, Drone DJ was the first to break this news here in North America, which was nice. But um, yeah, $150 million loss because of fraud is, uh, is a big deal. And apparently what happened is that the People who were working for supplying companies to DJI had upped the price by as much as almost 20%. So DJI grossly overpaid for those components and the differences, of course, uh, ended up in their pockets, in the pockets of the people committing the fraud. Um, One of the people from DJI apparently said that this was just the tip of the iceberg and the fraud surfaced in routine um, investigations from DJI late 2018. So if this is just the tip of the iceberg, it makes you wonder how long has this been going on, uh, what products were impacted, and how big of a fraud is this uh, really? I mean, it sounds to me like 150 million may only be the beginning of uh, what's to unravel here. Very interesting. Do you think that this fraud that DJI is facing has had any impact on the availability of the Phantom 4 Pro and Phantom 4 Pro version 2 series? Um, It might be. I mean, we we don't have any concrete information on that. I mean, uh, it might well be impacted. We don't know for sure. Uh, There's two theories floating around right now with regards to the uh, Phantom 4. Uh, Either it has to do with components from suppliers or it might be because the Phantom 5 is around the corner. Now, we here uh, don't think a new Phantom 5 is that close to be released. Uh, We see it maybe sometime in May, but not any time before this. I think there are even rumors circulating that the Phantom 5 may not even come to fruition, that DJI may dogleg right, as they would say, and kind of shrink the the Phantom into more of a Mavic series with a global shutter so that people can continue doing mapping. But with mapping being such a small segment of the overall industry as a whole, they may not do it, which honestly and frankly would be a huge surprise to me as I'm seeing people buying Phantoms primarily for the use of photogrammetry. So that would be really significant. But it seems like problems are abound as people are saying that it's drones again are the problem and are causing more and more airport closures. What news do you have for us there? Yeah, uh, this happened on Tuesday evening. Newark Airport halted its inbound and outbound flights for a short period of time after two drones apparently were spotted. Uh, This all happened right as the sun was setting. The drones that uh, allegedly have been seen were flying over Teterboro Airport, which is a a smaller airport uh, about 17 miles north-northwest of Newark. Um, it's mostly used by private planes, and apparently these uh, the pilots who had seen these two drones were flying into Newark, and as you do that, you you fly closely to uh, to Teterboro, uh, and that's where the drones were spotted, and as a result, the flights were halted. 
Of course, the interesting thing now is that there's no evidence of any drones. And also, you may wonder how likely it is to be able to spot a drone at that altitude as the sun is setting and you're flying probably about uh, 250 miles per hour. So it seems like this may well fall into the same category as Gatwick and Heathrow, where uh, there's a big scare about drones. Flights are being diverted. Flights are being canceled. They shut down the uh, the uh, landing areas. But at the same time, there's no hard evidence of any drone being involved. So it's uh, I think that there is actually hard evidence that there is no drone involved as, let's face it, New York City is one of the most congested airspaces in the country. And with the evolution of systems like Aeroscope and the Drone Fox system that are able to detect these drones, I would be honestly shocked if there was a drone because my line of thinking is that Newark and both Teterboro have an Aeroscope system. They're able to detect drones. So the fact that we haven't seen a suspect come up or even the proof of a drone they're in when both airports potentially have those systems, I highly doubt that there was ever a drone there to begin with. I agree. I, I highly doubt there was a drone there as well. I mean, I don't have any confirmation of Aeroscope being installed at these two uh, airports. That might well be the case. And no, they are at a number of airports around the country. I just don't have any information about these two airports. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's highly unlikely that these were in fact drones. But uh, like you said, drones are being the scapegoats in every situation where there is a scare related to them. Yeah, it is honestly fascinating. Well, on that bombshell, let's go ahead and move forward into the other news items that we're seeing this week. Haya, what do you have for us? There was a new firmware update for the DJI Phantom 4 RTK, and it makes a number of improvements, but uh, mostly focused on drone mapping solutions, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is kind of your expertise, isn't it? <laughs> it is kind of one of those expertise. Being a Pix40 partner, it does have that uh, nice little jingle to it, and that authority and credibility is nice to have. And you know that we just got back from Charleston doing another mapping class. Um, although I am bummed because we're supposed to be doing another NTSB uh, training hosted at the NTSB Training Academy. But due to the shutdown, we're unable to schedule any trainings there. So really sucks. But going into the Phantom 4 Pro RTK, you actually notified me of these changes, which are pretty exciting because there are a couple limitations when you're flying the Phantom 4 RTK. Last week, you had to fly in free flight mode if you wanted to fly orbits or get any oblique imagery that would give you detail on facades. And if you're familiar with drone mapping, getting that facade detail is really critical when you're creating you know, um, structure surveys or plot surveys that have structures on them. Now, that being said, DJI added the timed shooting mode, which really helps us ensure we collect overlap when we're flying in that free flight mode. So most drones have an orbital mode. P4RTK does not. So you have to fly that manually, essentially. But now with this time shooting mode, we can better ensure the overlap that we're capturing to get better detail, more tie points, and overall more points in our um, point cloud. Now that being said, DJI also added the RTCM 3.2 MSM3 network, which is actually a huge upgrade for the base station itself because right now that base station is getting RTK network corrections from just one of the nearest network towers that's available, whether it's a cores network or whether the user has access to a private network. Now that system is gathering data from multiple antennas and utilizing correction from multiple towers to get the best signal possible. So that's really increasing the reliability of our RTK signal so that we can use the P4 RTK as the gold standard for mapping because currently without more network access, we are not able to get that. So these are some huge changes. In addition with the firmware upgrade, we are now able to utilize third party programs. I haven't seen any third party programs come out just yet for the P4 RTK or a way to get those programs onto the remote controller itself. But I am really excited when Pix4D and other services do have that capability available because things like free flight mode through Pix4D and orbital mode through Pix4D will make mapping acquisition a lot easier than the current workflow. Yeah, totally agree. So what <laughs> else do we have in the news, my friend? 
Um, we are going to stay with DJI for a little bit longer. Uh, not only the Phantom 4 RTK got a firmware upgrade, but also the Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom received a firmware upgrade yesterday. And that firmware upgrade went hand in hand with an update for DJI Go 4 app. Uh, we'll get into that as well. Let's start with the, uh, the actual firmware. Um, there's a number of improvements, but really the, the biggest one is actually that they included waypoints now for the Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom. And that's a huge deal. I mean, last year when DJI launched the DJI Mavic Air, waypoints originally was going to be included for that drone. Then they decided to leave it out. And on Drone DJ, we ran a small poll asking people if they thought that uh, waypoints was actually a valuable feature. And we had quite an overwhelming response. We had more than four and a half thousand people saying that they wanted uh, waypoints on their uh, DJI Mavic Air back then. So just as an indication that waypoints is a feature that a lot of people use and a lot of people value greatly. It's good to see now waypoints in a newer version, version 2.0, being included in the DJI Mavic 2 Zoom and Pro models. And like I said, this goes hand in hand with the update for the DJI Go 4 app. Up till now, a lot of people have been using a third party app called Litchi, which actually does a great job uh, with waypoints. Uh, there's all kinds of settings you can adjust in that app and record as well. Um, and one of the big benefits with Litchi also is that you can plan your flights before you even leave the house. So you can on your iPad, draw the flights out, and then as you get to the location, you can uh, launch your drone. DJI really had none of those advanced features up till now. Uh, now with the version 2.0, as, as we, I guess we call it, uh, you are able to plan your routes uh, while you're still at home. Um, you can set a different poly line where you get all these different points and have the drone fly from point to point. You can have it record at certain uh, moments during that flight. Um, you can change the angle. You can change whether it's going to record video or uh, photos as well. But you can now also include the curves. Uh, the one thing I did see missing, though, is that you can't really change the, the diameter of the curve, whereas with Litchi, you can make it a nice, smooth, arcing curve or a very tight one if you want. Uh, it seems that DJI has not included that yet. Uh, however, from where they've come, it's a huge step up, and it's something to be really excited about. So if you haven't updated the app and you haven't updated your drone yet, then I would highly advise you to do so. Awesome. That's going to allow us to do, you know, kind of the same uh, video shots over and over again and could really also help out with small scale productions as they could pre-plan certain shots yeah. to be done in an area, just go and send the pilot and say, just follow these instructions and go. Yeah, well, that's actually a question I had for you. I mean, let's say if you're a mining company and you use drone mapping applications uh, to manage your inventory, if you can pre-program flights like this, I would imagine that would be a big help to, uh, to monitor those inventories. I think it also depends on how we can set the tilt of the camera and the oblique angle. I think there are some variables that I would want to know more about before I could confidently answer that question, um, as yeah. I would probably just end up using, uh, you know, Pix4D, USGS, or Litchi to do that instead of DJI Go 4, as I haven't uh, examined these features myself. But I do see the value in doing certain shots as you could, you know, plan out going down a road. So if you're doing a car commercial, you could be more focused on zooming the camera in and out and trying to get those smooth shots if you're not familiar with high-speed subject tracking and filming as well. So I think these waypoints actually offer a lot of creative opportunity as well. And I would say that I think that's where the majority and the bulk of the use would be. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, then the last news we have for DJI is that they've upgraded their support program for enterprise customers in North America. And this is basically their shield program. Uh, typically, you would have to pay up front an annual or a one-time fee. And then as you need a replacement for a certain drone, you would have to pay an additional small fee. Uh, now they waive the first one. And whenever you buy a DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise, you get the program for free, which is really nice. And the only question I really have for DJI is I wish they would do the same for the consumers uh, among us. I think if you uh, buy one of those drones, it'd be nice if you get a similar care program uh, from DJI as well. Gotcha. Well, I think that wraps up for this week's news. Very interesting that uh, DJI is really rolling out a lot more through the software side uh, as they are dealing with significant uh, mounting pressures and issues from their employees uh, in China. It is just really fascinating how all of this is, is going on. Do you know if any of, if this negative news of fraud is, is affecting their stock price at all? 
Well, DJI is still privately held, and so right now it doesn't, but we had about an, a year ago, we had an article that uh, DJI was looking for additional funding for their business operations and that they might in fact be preparing to uh, go public, uh, let's say late 2019 or 2020. Now, if they in fact do have the plans to take their company uh, public, um, Accountancy problems and fraud problems like they're facing right now, of course, would be a, a big concern for any potential investor, I would imagine. So uh, it sounds to me like DJI, uh, and uh, in fact, they have, they have organized a team, but they need to do some serious house cleaning and figure out what's going on and get a grip on these numbers because uh, 150 million, and if that's only the tip of the iceberg, that is a, a big concern for many people, I think. Yeah, definitely. But as systematic as DJI is, I would have uh, confidence that they'll be able to clean it all up. But on that bombshell, hi, I just want to say thank you very much for coming on the show to give us another edition of Drone News this week. Thank you very much for having me on the show, man. As always, I'm having fun. And everyone who's listening out there, thank you so much for joining us. If you're enjoying these news episodes, don't be afraid to leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or Spotify, wherever you download the show. But thank you again for joining us. That's going to do it for today and our drone news on another episode of Ask Drone You.